Hey yo, welcome back to the vlog today. We are working on what Henry? E91 M3 conversion. This is already converted as you guys already know, but we're pulling the motor out today to do... Putting an LS in it. Yeah, we're throwing an LS in this bad boy. Right Arlen? <laughs> LS. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alright Mike, what's going on now? Uh, it's been into uh, two hours of Netflix and chill. I've been watching Netflix and the motor's about to drop on its own. <laughs> now we just assembled everything already. Um, the only thing left now is to drop the subframe bolts and then we're going to pull the motor out. We're going to drop the whole assembly because the subframe and all that's going to change over anyways. So we spent the last, what time is it now? Like one, huh? One? So uh, about three okay. hours disassembling the car and then, ah! yeah. We got most of the stuff out so everything that's getting changed out is removed. The only thing that we gotta do is on the rear end, but everything on the front end is pretty much out. We got the uh, drive shafts already out too, so there's not too much left. And we still gotta do the manual conversion stuff too. That whole side should be good. Okay. I bungeed these shuts. Okay. So just look around the top, like mm -hmm. harnesses and stuff like that. Go. Go. Arlen, your side good? Yeah, I don't see anything. Go. Go. Hold on. Check your side. Brown one. So yeah, having this table makes life much easier instead of pulling the whole front end out to pull the motor out or pulling the trans out to pull the motor out upwards. Drop the whole cell frame with the motor and trans. It's much Go. easier like this. Go again. Go. Go again. That's a radiator. I was going to worry about that. Henry, move your stuff away from the uh, transmission. Go. Nah, I'll be fine. I ain't gonna move. It's pretty stable. We're good. Go I don't on. see it shifting, shaking, or anything. So. Okay, okay, hold on. We need to shift it towards the driver's side a little bit. Good? Yeah. Alrighty, bring the car up. Ta da! Going up! Yeah. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Watch out. Leak out. No, it ain't. Go. Go up! There he is, boys. single by the way ready to mingo huh uh. so as you guys can see we got the motor out of the wagon this is the n52 engine we're going to remove this and drop in a 2jz gte with a rb26 head i'm just kidding <laughs> we're doing s65 swap but yeah most of this stuff won't be reused um all this stuff's gonna be swapped over but yeah we got pretty much everything out now we can look up inside of here and look into the empty hole Alrighty, so now that we have this over here, we're setting up the cherry picker to pull the motor off the subframe. This subframe is going to go back on this car temporarily until I get more parts to be able to swap in the S65 into it. Uh, that's good. Let me adjust this. To go get food and they already have the motor out <laughs> <laughs> that's all out and then we got to rip out the interior next pull out that auto shifter and then and pull out the brake um assembly and put in the manual one and then pretty much get it ready for manual conversion on the inside change out the steering wheel too so continuing on from yesterday's vlog uh i kind of left it off at you know the half point where we were 
um, we continue to work on the E91 which I will give you guys more update on that and add it to this vlog as well so it'll be one clip for two days um, but this is the next day after but I wanted to show you guys this E90 that we extracted the belt out of recently on uh, one of my vlogs previously but we extracted what we can we told them to drive the car so that we can basically recirculate the oil clean up anything that's left inside the engine because we knew that there was still going to be very small uh, micro uh, belt inside of it because it did come out as little shreds like literally a cotton ball and when we turned on the car it kept having a vanos code so i knew that there was going to be belt inside the passageway but we wanted to clear it all out remove what we can because he didn't want to remove the motor to get it hot tanked and extract it all because uh, it is quite a lot of belt inside of there and obviously it's a lot of money but he did bring the car back to us yesterday we started removing the oil pan to extract what we knew was going to be in there and let me show you guys what was still in the engine after we showed you guys what we extracted so you can see all that was removed today so we are changing out this oil pump as well because we know that there is going to be a lot of fiber inside of here as well so this pump is no good anymore we wanted to remove whatever we could so all this was removed we removed the griddle um, basically just to extract all the belt that was on there and there was more belt on here now you guys can see all that scoring here that was due to the belt actually sitting on there and the connecting rod was pushing down there constantly it was actually wrapped it. around the connecting rod so it added more thickness to the connecting rod and it just continuously beat on it yep and then you found what more belt on the crank up too right here actually right there perfect fucking ring that That's was actually size. wrapped around the crank hub itself i had to cut it in half just to get it out it's yep. pretty bad so I cut it in half just to get it out and then we have full access to everything down here inspecting basically every cylinder removing any additional belt that's left inside of the car uh, we removed the pump out of the way because we're changing it out and then we're going to inspect all the timing guides but to be honest with you um, I could see that the timing guide has been damaged so we need to replace that too um, if not, it's just going to fail eventually. I would know, still, yeah, hot tanking the motor is still a big recommendation. Even when I pulled it out, I already pulled out all the hairs that were in there, but all these little galleys in here that pull oil to passages in your motor, that was all filled with hair. So I pulled out what I could, but chances are there's still a lot of hair way inside the galleys that I can't see. Yeah, exactly. So like, as I was saying, like there's probably a lot of small uh, fiber inside of the yeah. passageway for, you so know, those small fibers else. turn into these clumps and then you get issues with that. Yeah, you can see how tiny it is, like really, really tiny. Look at that. So you can see this is what's going inside the engine. Yeah. So at this point, we're probably going to, well, first we're going to remove the valve cover. Yeah. Right. We're, gonna we're going cover. to remove the valve cover, inspect everything up top, and then give him a call and see what he wants to do. Uh, chances are he's going to want us to just remove the valve cover, extract what we can, run the car again. And then if it happens again, we're probably going to pull the motor. Yeah, because at this point, it just becomes stringent enough to try and rely on the motor for the oil pickup filter and the oil filter to pick up all the fibers. But even then, do you really want to risk that issue? Let's say, worst case scenario, one gets inside the rod somehow, which it can. If you get one little contamination in your rod, especially something solid, you can score that rod potentially spinning a bearing. Or yeah. even the ring. Even the ring, If it gets yeah. onto the cylinder wall. Cylinder wall's in the ring. And this is a sleeved block, so that's very It's expensive. not sleeved. It's not sleeve. No. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That's even worse. It's just a closed deck, stock sleeve. Yeah, that's very, that's so not a good thing soft. to have. Exactly. So there's a lot of possibilities, but I think um, without even calling him you know, and talking to him before we record this, I'm going to assume he's going to want us to continue with what we're already doing. And if the issue arises again, then we would pull the motor, disassemble, and then send it out to hot tank, clean out the motor, and then reassemble. Um, but at the end of the day we're already at that point where yeah. we removed all this already we're gonna see what else we can remove and run the car again if it happens again we'll pull out the motor and hot tank it this is if, just a reminder to do your maintenance yeah do your maintenance i mean in this case you know he did a aftermarket oil cooler and this yeah. happened but i mean there's regardless that, if you like, have any oil leak that's going on to your belt address it oil filter housing gas address it because if not coolers. this can happen you know this is very expensive and this is our second time removing it yeah, this is our second time. How many cars have we had that had the belt slip? A in? lot, a, a lot. lot. Yeah. And normally they're not this bad. Normally they come out like, you know, big chunks like this. 
So not like you know this hairball. I think this is a but, very extreme situation. Exactly. I was just telling you about it. I'm like, yeah. I have never seen it this severe before. Ever. Yeah. This is the worst that I've seen too. So it's just like when I pulled it out, I was just like, oh, that's a lot of crap coming out. Yeah. And that explains why his oil was so clean when we pulled it out. Because if you think about it, he's not getting any oil pressure sucking yeah. up, so well, it's not even circulating. He actually hasn't driven this car. He's probably yeah. put five to ten miles onto this car ever since. That's it. Just five to ten miles. So I did recommend for him to get a new pump because I knew this was going to be the problem. <clears throat> what did we learn? Don't buy an N54. Don't. That's that's the bigger fucking answer. <laughs> 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 yeah, N54 problems. Um, we are making a belt guard that can prevent this from happening. So yeah. that should be released pretty soon. I think the S55s have those common too, right? Yeah, all of them. Um, yeah. All of them have the same problem. So is it just the front crank seals weak and just pushes in? Mm -hmm. Let's make a RB or 2J, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leaving off where we left off yesterday, uh, we installed the clutch pedal assembly. So now it has the manual pedal assembly. Uh, you can actually do this for manual conversion on it. Pretty much uh, all E9Xs, you can buy the whole assembly. The brake pedal and the clutch assembly is actually one unit and it's actually bolted in with three nuts. It can be swapped over and changed between the two. There is already pre-drilled uh, holes into this chassis so you can convert it to manual. Same thing when it comes to the shifter. I mean, we have this all apart right now, but inside of here, you can actually remove this. And for autos, if you're doing a manual conversion, for autos, they actually have these uh, rivets, nut certs to be exact, that are already pre-installed on here. There's one right there that you can see, and then two more right there. Uh, the hole and passageway on rear wheel drives are exactly the same. So if you have an all wheel drive, it's a little bit more difficult because you have to do an all wheel drive conversion. So in this case, since we're doing S65 manual conversion, this was the ideal chassis, which is a rear wheel drive automatic. So if you actually run an RTD shifter or CAE, uh, they utilize these pre-drilled holes already. So if your car's manual, there's actually a little bit of silicone on here covering up these holes, but there are already holes inside of here. So RTD and CAE would actually bolt directly into this so you don't have to drill or use nuts or anything like that or the sandwiching plate So that's pretty awesome. Just bolt it down to right here and you're good to go So we are changing out this whole center console uh, Cover plus all these trims. It's gonna go, come out of my E90 M3 and then change out the cluster too um, So motors already out of this car and then we started removing a couple stuff So here you guys can actually see the pedal assembly for an automatic so there are just two nuts that are held on here and here in that two hole and then there's one more right here and then this whole assembly comes out so you can actually swap this with a manual one super simple to do but once that's out of the way then you can just change it out to that and then you got to get the clutch line and then the line that goes to the brake master and then on top of that you have the clutch slave which is actually a part of the clutch pedal assembly so if you get a unit that's pre-owned you can actually just swap that out with the um you just buy a manual one that you need so motor is out of this we have this outside right now until uh we get everything else that we need for this because everything has to be changed on this ac lines are has to be changed radiator has to be changed uh, i think the ac condenser will be the same if not we'll change that as well so heater hose fortunately can be reused um well no they can't be reused we got to change it out to the uh m3 one that's simple the heater core is actually the exact same same thing with the evap so that's actually one unit there so luckily it's all interchangeable we just got to change out all the lines and hoses and stuff like that um for manual conversion to run a line from the master cylinder here they actually already have the nipples on them, either if it's for a you know right-hand drive or left-hand drive, auto or manual. You can actually remove these caps, which are actually, just get like some cutters and just cut it. So you can see it right here. Just cut this out right here and you can slide on a hose. For left-hand drive, there's already a pre-drilled hole right there. You can see a grommet. So you pop out that grommet, you can run the line into the uh, clutch master cylinder, which is on the pedal assembly. And then you run one hard line inside the car. Again, a pre-drilled hole there. Pop that grommet out and you can run the clutch line down to the transmission tunnel. So everything on these cars is already pre-drilled for either manual or auto. 
So it's super simple to convert to a manual if you know you have an auto. Same thing if you have a you know manual and you want to convert to DCT or something. Same thing. You just cover up those grommets or put grommets on it and you're good to go. So that's where we're at with this car. So we are doing rod bearings on an E46 M3 as well. Uh, these do have problems as well. Not as severe as uh, the S65s. Oh, that's copper. Though. But you can see the copper wear on there. Yeah, these are kind of annoying to do. It's a lot more work. Just change these out. We got to torque it down like a hundred thousand times each one, right, Henry? Yeah. Don't you love doing them? No, I fucking hate it actually. <laughs> so that pretty much ends it for today's vlog. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Um, once I have more progress on the E91 M3 wagon, uh, I will update you guys. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed all the videos I've been producing for you guys and found it informative. If you guys do, please hit the like button and subscribe if you can. Appreciate it. Take care, guys.